signal transduction is all about communications and everybody who now lives in the world of social networks and iPhones and tablets knows how important communication is and cells also use communication means but they don't use electronics they use biochemical reactions to communicate the typical way is that a cell lives in an organism so they don't live on their own and so communicating is extremely important because each cell needs to know what the other cell does and also needs to respond to the environment in the appropriate way so for instance if a cell needs to grow or to divide or proliferate it needs to do so but it needs to be instructed by the neighbors so the neighbors are constantly watching you what you're doing and this is important for a multicellular organism because obviously if every cell in our body would do what they want the body wouldn't work <clears throat> so it has to be really a well-oiled machine where all the components work together as teams and signal transduction ensures that this is happening and it is actually just the importance of signaling is stressed by the fact that about 15 percent of our genes are dedicated to signaling and regulation so it's like in a good bureaucracy a lot of people or a lot of components controlling <coughs> a few workers but it is important because the we also know from diseases if the signaling goes wrong then we get diseases like cancer neurodegeneration diabetes and all sorts of other nasty diseases <clears throat> so that regulation is hugely important and actually signal transduction was discovered uh, in the oncogene field so oncogenes are genes which were found in viruses which affect birds or mice and which cause tumors so th this is why they were called oncogenes a gene which causes a tumor then people tried to find out what these oncogenes are doing and how they can cause cancer and one um, very amazing observation was that these so-called oncogenes in the virus are actually not genes from the virus but the virus had picked up these genes from the host cells so these viruses can incorporate into the genome and they can integrate a piece of the host genome <clears throat> and then as part of their own viral genome transmit it to other cells and this ha has happened when these viruses were integrating in certain genes which are all components as it turned out of signaling pathways that they would pick up such a gene but typically not the whole gene but just a portion of it and then that this became an oncogene and the reason why this became an oncogene is because these incomplete genes have had lost typically the regulatory region so they were constitutively active they were active all the time they would be like a signaling system you know where the amplifier is stuck and it just you've turned it all the way up and you can't turn it down <clears throat> and so these pathways then would get activated and drive the cell to proliferate to grow to survive and form a tumor and in the process of <clears throat> trying to find out what these oncogenes are doing this is really where a lot of the basic discoveries in signaling were made and signaling is now a huge field it's way more than oncogenes it's way more than cancer but the sort of birth of the field was in oncogenes and trying to find out what oncogenes are doing and if you look for instance very in general you know what the signaling pathway is doing you have something from the outside a signal which tells the cell something for instance it, this signal let's say tells the cell you should divide the signal typically binds to a receptor so this can be a receptor for a growth factor or a growth hormone and then this receptor typically assembles other proteins so they form a complex <clears throat> it's like assembling a team of proteins which then communicate the signal into the inside of the cell and instead of using electric circuits or electronics we use biochemical reactions so for instance a receptor would activate kinases which transfer phosphate and thereby regulate other proteins so 
the phosphate transfer often regulates the activity of another protein. So you could have activation or inhibition and you percolate this signal through into the nucleus where you get changes in gene transcription and these transcriptional changes then will put the cell into a different state and say you're instructed to divide so make DNA, synthesize ribosomes, <coughs> replicate your DNA and divide. What we have seen here was basically how a signal gets from the outside to the inside. And this is of course a very simplified way because what we also have learned is that signaling is not a pipeline. It's actually networks. It's very, very highly connected networks. It's similar, you can imagine if you go to a party and people talk to each other. Right, you have changing connections. Sometimes you talk to this person, then you talk to the next person, and signaling is sort of the same way. There's a lot of crosstalk, a lot of communication. <clears throat> so this is, has caused actually a very important insight that we thought for a long time signaling is just a pipeline where you put in a signal and it comes out at the other end. Now we know signals are networks, so that means there's a lot of integration going on and a change in one part of the network may affect a completely other part of the network. And for instance, this becomes very important in the action of drugs or in drug resistance. So for instance, in cancers, very often cancers become resistant to a drug. And this happens often because you block a component, but because it's a network, the network finds a way how to bypass that block. So what we need to do is now we need to think in terms of signaling as networks. And we need not only block one pipeline, but we need to figure out all the connections, all the network, and then block different parts in the network. So it's like strategic roadblocks, you know, where blocking one road is not enough. You have to block several roads and you have to do it at the same time, or you have to do it in a certain order <coughs> to achieve the maximum effect. On the other hand, it also actually opens new ways for therapeutics because by influencing one part, you could have an effect in a completely different part. And again, this turns out now, for instance, that a lot of drugs which affect metabolism may be useful cancer drugs because metabolism is also controlled by net signaling networks. And that if you change metabolism or if you change the metabolic networks, you may have an effect on proliferation networks or on networks which uh, preserve the integrity of the DNA and the integrity of the genome. <clears throat> so we have to really now think in really broader terms and this is why we nowadays not only use experimentation but also computational analysis to understand these networks where we can in the computer in silico simulate how these networks behave, how they adapt and also how we can manipulate them so that we can improve health outcomes. Yeah, the, the real biggest challenge is the complexity of these networks. So we only are looking at the tip of the iceberg in terms of <coughs> understanding these networks. And whatever we try to do to use these networks, you know, for therapeutic purposes, we are just facing this enormous complexity and this is why again why computational models become very important to understand these networks and to analyze them and if you you know look at the components of these networks they have probably several thousand components maybe more and then you have combinatorial effects so you can make a calculation that if you want to understand the network you very quickly come up that you would need to understand more components than the universe has molecules. So clearly you can't do this in your brain and we need to you know, resort to smart algorithms, visualization, simulation techniques. So we will see a much closer collaboration between the biology and computing but then I think on the other hand we will see now drugs coming out which manipulate networks rather than hitting single targets and manipulate networks in a smart way so that there is better therapeutic effects and less side effects.